Hello and welcome to the channel, I'm the Sterninator and if you're joining us you may already be aware of the current series that we're on. We're currently turning Elden Ring bosses from the latest expansion, Shadow of the Erd Tree, into Pokemon. So these Pokemon have the big challenge of going from something terrifying, spooky, scary, into a cute and lovable little friend that you would want to take with you on your adventure. So this is your spoiler. Spoiler officially ended. Today we are looking at Skadu Tree Avatar, something that I've had a couple people recommend to me. One that people have been saying, wow, this is one I can't wait to see, as well as a couple others. So this is by no means the end of this series. I've had a ton of people bringing up characters, not just from the expansion, but other enemies that I should be drawing. And a part of me really wants to do that. So let me know in the comments if you want to see more Elden Ring enemies turned into Pokemon. I'd love to hear about which ones you'd love to see, which ones you're excited about. So with that, let's hop into it. For Skagitry, I knew that there were a couple things that I had to get right. One is that big flowery head. This thing is a giant plant after all. It's a big thorny and viney interwoven creature, which really spoke to me because I love, here's a little secret about me. I love drawing vines. Uh, for a while, when I first kind of got into drawing and posting stuff online, I was drawing a lot of Ben 10 artwork, and my absolute favorite thing to draw was Wild Vine. So having something that intertwines these vines and these looping, swooping angles really was something that I was happy to get into, uh, to the point that you'll see I actually go through two, three, four, five iterations of this stance in order to get something that I'm happy with, something that feels dynamic, but also has a pretty clear silhouette that you can tell what the character is and what it's doing. So that was fun, challenging, weird to get through, but I ended up being really happy with the direction that I went at the end. I feel like it did capture that dynamic pose while still making sure that it's a silhouette and a shape that is easily recognizable for where it's standing. Uh, this one, I, I will say, I, I went through a lot of iterations of the design process. Once I got that head done, and I knew kind of what I wanted to do for the head shape, which was just very clearly translate over the inspiration, I found that I didn't have a ton of concepts or ideas immediately following that. So I went with like, okay, maybe it should have thorns, maybe it should have leaves, maybe it should be a lot more flowery, maybe I should draw inspiration from the Sunflora of a different ability type that I did for Nordist's challenge. I don't know, I, I, I was suddenly at a loss, and I find myself doing that a lot with these Elden Ring bosses, is I have a concept, I come into that concept knowing what I want to do, getting there and then realizing, man, I was vastly mistaken. So it's been a fun experiment to see kind of how I can stretch my brain in adapting these designs into something that is recognizable as the initial design, or at least an inspiration of that initial design, while also ensuring that it feels Pokemon, it feels unique. The big thing that I've always been taught with Pokemon is they should feel like they can be your friends. And that is the very opposite of where Elden Ring takes its character designs. <laughs> they take it, this should be your enemy. This should feel like something you hate just at the outset. So taking that motif and twisting it into Pokemon proves a lot more difficult than I give it credit for each and every time. I really feel like it's a fun experiment, but it is something that I've had to kind of uh, girder my loins on a little bit, making sure that I'm able to tackle all of these facets at the same time. So I got a shape that I was happy with. I got a design I was happy with, and then came the coloring, and the coloring itself was gonna be its own tragedy, comedy, it's its own play overall. You know, how do I want to tackle this thing that is ultimately just a bramble of grays and black and red and, and menacing eyes and how do I take that into something that feels more segmented, more separated? Something that allows you to see the shapes a little bit more. And I, I think that I got it. I think that kind of it looks so much like just a cutesy version of Scatty Tree that I was like, I can probably play with the colors a little bit. I can probably give it a little bit more green. This is obviously gonna be a grass type. I knew that from the start. So how do I take that and apply that 
to the color. And, and once I decided that, once I kind of sat down and decided, okay, I'm so solid on the design looking like Skagitry, I think that I can take some risky choices here. I feel like that really freed me up a little bit more. I still wanted to maintain that same base structure, that same base color typing. Uh, in fact, the shiny for this design ends up being very much Skagitry colors. And that was a fun opportunity. But yeah, I, I think that it, it ended up working out something that I was, was happy with and was able to make it my own while still allowing it to be the base inspiration. So let me know what you think. Uh, this one's pretty much done and I'm pretty happy with it. Scattertree, the Avatar Pokemon. Much is debated about this Pokemon, with many claiming that the vines making up the body are mere extensions controlled by the primary body, which is the three seeds found in its head. Fragments of this Pokemon have been discovered throughout the region, which has only furthered this theory. Its unique ability, Fragmentize, allows it to deal greater damage the more injured that it becomes, almost as though shaving off parts of itself to litter the battlefield with sharp, dry tendrils. More research is required to fully understand what this Pokemon is capable of. So, there you have it. There's Scadutree turned into Scattertree. I had a ton of fun coming up with the name for this, just given the lore of the actual inspiration and what the ability does. If you want to find more of my stuff, you can find me at Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Obviously, different stuff at different places, with Patreon having a lot of the exclusives. But let me know what you want to see next. Maybe you have a boss in mind that's not from the expansion, but you really want to see me draw. Let me know. I'd love to hear about it. I also have some collaborations coming up that I'm really excited for, so keep in contact with what's going on with the channel to be up to date with that. And until next time, sounds like you know where to find me. Bye.